Hello friends, James Stevenson back with another episode in my forecast video review series. This is probably part six by now. Uh, what are we up to, Loki? Uh, Loki is busy doing something else right now. You can keep an eye on Loki in the Loki's bed cam here. While I turn my attention to this automotive gross margin chart. Uh, I don't always share this one, but I, felt, I thought I would this time. This is Tesla excluding regulatory credits. Tesla regulatory credits, how much are they contributing to automotive gross margin? And then just for reference, for comparison, what about Toyota? Toyota is upheld as the standard for automotive gross margin. If you're beating Toyota, you're doing something great because their auto gross margin is uh, perceived to be excellent. So they're kind of the, the bar. Uh, and Tesla was beating the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, even without regulatory credits, Tesla's margin was performing better than Toyota's for, what is that, a solid three years uh, prior to the current auto market, which has been tough. And Toyota has been navigating that a little better than Tesla has. Let me talk about one of the dynamics behind that. That is the dealership model. Toyota sells to dealerships. Uh, they don't sell directly to buyers, so uh, they don't do as well as Tesla does when there is pricing power to be had because their dealerships don't want to pay a lot more for vehicles. They want to take the profit because they perceive that they're the ones taking the risk of holding the inventory uh, that they buy, right? So... Dealerships do really well in uh, strong economies when they can charge a lot for new Toyotas. Uh, but Toyota still gets to charge those dealerships just as much, even when the economy is doing badly and the dealerships do poorly, which is the kind of the dynamic that you see here for Tesla losing automotive gross margin here. The other contributing factor here is that Tesla isn't selling as much full self-driving as I thought they would. I thought Tesla's auto gross margins would hold up really well this year uh, and into next year because FSD would be so good, so many people would be buying it, and that revenue drops straight to the bottom line as profit. Tesla hasn't been selling that much of it. Uh, things are tough out there, and car buyers are not flush with cash. Inflation has been eating up a lot of their disposable income, so people can't charge as much for cars as they used to. That all said, these rates are okay. Like Q2 of 2024, here's where we are today, just below 15%. I expect this to be a short-term drop, like maybe we get one more quarter that's like this uh, before it turns around and recovers some back closer to this 20% gold standard uh, from Toyota. It just so happens I picked a yellow line for Toyota. I didn't mean to make them the gold standard, but a lot of folks think they are. Okay, if I can hit the right button here, I'll click into my chart and proceed to the next one, which is Tesla quarterly megawatt hours deployed. This is megawatt hours of uh, energy storage. And you can see in Q2 of 2024, this number took off above 8 gigawatt hours. 8,000 megawatt hours is 8 gigawatt hours, if my math is correct. And uh, I'm expecting that to be not just a one-off quarter. I think Tesla's guidance is that's the new normal. It's going to go, you know, we're going to see more numbers like this in the future. I'm not guaranteeing they will all be higher than the 8.4 gigawatt hours we got, something like that in Q2, but it's a good chart just to illustrate, hey, Tesla has made a lot of progress in this regard, and oh yeah, they're building another mega factory in China to make mega packs there locally with locally sourced parts. Those ought to be less expensive than the ones they make today in Lathrop, California. California is not the cheapest place in the world to manufacture things, uh, so I fully expect for there to be a lot of demand for the mega packs out of that factory in China, as there is for mega packs from the Lathrop facility, and that we'll see more and more megawatt hours deployed 
of energy storage. Also, Powerwall 3s are part of this number, and Powerwall 3 is a great product by all accounts. A big improvement over the first generation Powerwall, and even the second generation Powerwall that it replaced. All right, uh, here's another one about energy. You get two energy charts in this video. This one is showing you energy division revenue versus energy division cost of sales. These used to be dogfighting each other. You never knew which one was going to be higher than the other. Uh, a lot of quarters, Tesla lost money on Tesla energy, even at the gross margin line, which is not great. You don't want to be selling stuff at the same cost. Uh, that it costs you to make that stuff. Uh, but since 2023, revenue has consistently exceeded cost of sales, meaning energy has been a net contributor to Tesla's overall gross margin uh, and therefore to earnings, right? So in Q2, what did we see? A giant upswing uh, and the costs went up with it, but not by as much. So that led to the energy division contributing more gross margin in Q2 of 2024 than ever before. So if you're looking for bright spots lately from Tesla, this is one of them. Tesla energy coming into its own, becoming more profitable recently. And my expectation in the forecast is that the revenues will grow by more than the costs of sales grow leading to larger and larger jaws of profitability here for the Tesla energy division. What else do we have here? Well, this chart is just showing research and development expense. Over a trailing 12-month basis, is Tesla investing more in R&D now than they used to? Yes, <laughs> it's been an all-time record the last one, two, three, four, five quarters in a row. Tesla has broken their record for most money spent on research and development. Now, is it a figure of merit how much you spend on research and development? Like if Tesla had spent $10 billion on research and development, would that have been better than spending $4 billion on research and development? Uh, it depends how the money is used, right? Uh, it depends how you spend it. What Tesla is doing with this is a whole lot of different things, obviously. Uh, product development, design, all the uh, autonomous driving uh, stuff, all the uh, robo-taxi, driverless ride-sharing stuff is in here. There's a whole lot uh, in the Franz von Holzhausen wheelhouse. And uh, good to see this trend uh, investing more and more into that aspect of Tesla's business that will pay future dividends, we all hope. Here's one for gap net income in billions of dollars. Uh, Tesla used to lose money back in 2018 and 2019 on a quarterly basis. This is not smoothed out on a tra uh, trailing 12-month basis. This is giving you each quarter as it happened. Uh, which is why you get this nutty spike in Q4 of 2023. Knock 5.93 billion off this number, and it comes down to about here. Uh, this is where Tesla's earnings would have been in Q4 of 2023 had they not finally declared the one-time tax benefit from prior year's losses in Q4 of 2023. And you can see the last couple of quarters haven't been all that great, but they have been more than a billion dollars, which is something. Uh, it's uh, it's better than having less than a billion dollars worth of gap net income, right? Uh, so that's that chart. Then I've got this one, uh, hot on its heels and with the same note, the same footnote at the bottom. This one's giving you, excluding regulatory credits, how much gap net income or loss did Tesla report in each of these quarters beginning in uh, 2021? Here's the last time Tesla would have lost money without regulatory credits. They certainly did help in Q1 and Q2. Hey, regulatory credits, that is good money to make if you can make it. A lot of companies can't make it, meaning they can't make and sell compelling EVs into the market. So they're forced to pay a fine either to the government or to their competitor, Tesla, 
uh, to purchase EV credits uh, for not making enough good EVs to uh, apply to to uh, comply with applicable law. And I think that's my video for today. So with that, I will check back in with Loki, who is still curled up in bed with his back turned to me. I can hear him uh, over there. Hi, Loki. Uh, <laughs> making, making kind of a stink eye face at me at the moment. And with that, I'll remind you to like the video if you liked the video. Give me a thumbs up or a heart if you liked the video. That'll let the algorithm know to recommend this video to other people like you who might like this video. Thank you to everybody who supports me, especially my executive producers, Kathy Kitchler and Rebellionaire.com, and I'll see you in the next one.